spent six years in the Army National Guard. One of those years was in Kuwait, Iraq, to support Operation New Dawn, single with no kids. I don't know why you put that up there. <laughs> Currently a graduate student at William and Mary, studying Master of Science in Business. Analytics, put your hands together, my man, Brian McGowan! Good evening, good evening, everyone. Hi. Sorry, I'm a little socially awkward, so this is all new to me. But um, it's a great crowd we have here. Uh, I've seen a lot of friendly faces out there. I'm also seeing a lot of confused faces. You know? <laughs> See several of you leaned over to your neighbor like, oh, what is it? What color is that guy? Is he white? Is he black? Is he Asian? I don't know, sweetie, but hopefully he's not here to rob us. <laughs> don't worry, guys, I swear I'm not here to rob anybody. At least of nothing tangible, you know? I'm gonna try and steal the Sunday evening from you. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, it can be rather entertaining to see how confused people get when they see me. You know, um, funny thing is, I'm just as confused as they are, you know? As someone who's black and white, you know, every day is like an eternal struggle for me, you know? I'm also a student at William & Mary, so, Every day I wake up and it's like, I need to decide whether or not I should go to class, play a game of basketball, or go fishing down the Potomac. <laughs> Today I decided, well, I should try all three. <laughs> ah. Sorry, so, so, so back to waking up confused. You know? <laughs> Any of you know what an earworm is? Earworm is when you get a song stuck in your ear and you, for some reason you just cannot get it out. Well, for me, it's a little more profound, you know? Sometimes it can have major impacts on my life decisions. Like some days I wake up and I have Mozart stuck in my ear. And I think, oh, it's gonna be a peaceful day. Another day it might be Coldplay. It's like, oh, it's gonna be depressing. Some days it might be DMX, you know, like, y'all gonna make me lose my mind. <laughs> when that happens, you know, I just get amped. And I get crazy, I think, oh man, I'm just gonna go, I just wanna do something I'm gonna regret later in life. <laughs> and I think that was the day I decided to join the military. <laughs> I'll never forget that day in processing, you know? I go there, and it was 2008, so this is the year that Obama was running for president. First time that a biracial guy had been exposed to the world. So sure enough, I get there, everybody's like, hey, there goes Obama, yeah. Obama's joining the army, this is great. Yes, we can. Oh, no, we can't, he's here to rob us. And I have to reassure people, no, no, I promise you I'm not here to rob you. We're gonna make terrible life decisions, but robbing you is not the one I'm gonna make today. <laughs> no. So, it's cool. I, I go through intake, go through processing, flying colors. No issues at all. Uh, until I get to security clearance, you know? The lady there, she asks me, she says, okay, I'm looking through your documents. I see you have no felonies, right? I'm like, yep, no felonies. Your credit looks pretty good. Like, yep, never a late payment. And she takes a long look at me and says, and you're Asian, right? That, that's good. I said, no, ma'am, I'm not Asian. I do wear a do-rag at night. <laughs> and she says, so do you want me to put black? I'm like, no, okay. Uh, what do I put? What's going to be the best bet for me to get in? It's like, well, look, here. Any color will get you in the army. But if you want to get promoted faster, you should put white. <laughs> I said, sure, why not? Put white down. I'll be white for a few years. <laughs> That's not too bad, right? But I thought, like, if I can confuse the military, you know, I can only imagine what the general public thinks. You know, every day, me driving, the kind of car I drive is probably confusing enough. I drive a Chevy Tahoe, a three-inch three -inch lift, 20-inch wheels, limo tent, with a William and Mary sticker blasting classical music. And some of these days, I forget that, that I'm wearing my do it. So I can only imagine when I'm driving, it's like throwing a flash grenade down the road, you know? People, the expressions I see on people's face when they see me is priceless, you know? People of lesser color than me, you know, when I'm driving, they look like this. What in the world is that? Well, we need to get to the left lane. We don't, we don't trust this guy over here, he might rob us. You know, the people of darker color than myself, it's kind of the opposite, they're like, well, hold up. Stay closer to me. I don't believe what I'm seeing. This guy's wearing a do-rag? And of course, you know, uh, Asian people, they just pay me no mind. They just drive straight ahead like this. You know, sometimes I have to wave just to make sure that they see me. Like, hey, I'm over here. Don't cut me off. 
Oh, I'm gonna cut you off anyways, don't worry. <laughs> Um, yeah, but anyways, yeah. Cops, they just, they just pull me over. <laughs> there, there's no question about that. As soon as they see my dude right here, they don't even... And they say, we're pulling this guy over. He looks suspicious, okay? So I actually got pulled over recently, and cop comes up to the window, and he says, excuse me, sir, do you know why I pulled you over? I'm like, uh, let me guess. Was I speeding? He says, Yes, sir, you were doing 52 and a 25. <laughs> I'm like, 52 and a 25, really? Look, officer, I know the deal. Here, here goes my military ID, and it does say that I'm white. He says, I don't believe this, let me take a look. <laughs> Actually, you're, you're right, okay, you know what? You can have a great day, sorry. This is completely an accident, all right? That's all the time I have for this evening. You guys have a good night.